Hi, you guys. It's Linda G coming to you from sunny Northern California. Not as hot today as it has been. I'm going to do a live on my steam yard, but I have to let you know what happened to me. I had a visit from Emmett Till. And yesterday, you know, I heard his story and I knew how tragic it was. And Rachel Maddow had a little spiel on him about how they tried to put up memorials for him and people had shot at it. I remember I was, while I was watching that, just felt so disgusted because why? The poor kid was 14 years old. Why are you defiling his memorial? It It's just, it's still there that poor prejudice is still there. So as I'm energetically going into not a good place, like, oh boy, fortunately, after they ruined a couple of these memorials, somebody on their own dime built a memorial for him with a steel that cannot be penetrated with bullets. They put a fence in cameras. There's your key right there, your cameras. So right now it looks okay. Now it will be federal because President Biden decided this is federally connected, which it should be. So this young, gorgeous, beautiful young man, energetically, in spirit form, came to me. And at first I thought, oh, I must be just putting it in my head because I was thinking about him. No, it was him. And um, he had a beautiful smile too. Here's a few pieces he wanted me to say. It was a horrible death. I'm not, you know, apparently his actual death was caused by a bullet wound, but, you know, his head was so bashed. He's telling me that he got knocked out. So basically he suffered quite badly and then he wished for death. So something happened with how they bashed him that when they pulled him out of the water, the top of his skull fell, fell off. I, I'm sorry to be so detailed entertainment purposes only but so he wanted everybody to know that and he's telling me as prophesized which is weird but almost like sacrificed like all of this was based on a lie by the way he said that he was happy and upbeat a little flirty but he never was really inappropriate to that white woman and that white woman who's now dead, I didn't see her. But, uh, you know, in my anger about all of them, he told me, apparently she took it back. She took back her whole story. It was based on the lie. And as I'm getting angry at her, he says, but Linda, she thought he was being disrespectful to her. And then they expanded the story. And he, she was forced to go with the story based on what the husband told her. The husband told her, you got it. And, you know, they really hated Black people. That, you know, uh, the thing is, is that eventually all this anger towards Black people will eventually go away. But like those guys that did this last memorial, they did this out of their own dime. They did this on their own. And they did it because they were sick and tired of his memorials getting yanked down. There's more good people than there are bad, you guys. I don't want you to worry. This kid was just like a blooming light. He wanted me to tell you guys that his moms, he calls her moms, not mama, he called her moms. My moms was the one that struggled and suffered more so than me. I had the great liberty of death and I was, I was with the almighty. My mom was a light beacon on earth. I am so proud of her and what she did. And you know, she refused to cover up that coffin and she told everybody, you know, Jet Magazine, anybody take pictures of it. It really, it's just like the bridge with John Lewis, really shook people up down to their core. The core prejudices and racism, even, People of color don't like other people, don't like white people, don't like other people of color. That will change, but it's like I'm seeing like 10, 10 to 20 years. It'll get better with, by 2026, but it's because we're fighting in this world to remain whole and we don't 
as long as we vibrationally stand in the realm of love and forgiveness, they'll always answer us. So the absolute devastation caused by the death of this young man, who, by the way, believe it or not, he's telling me, he had agreed to this. So he agreed to this. These guys, whatever they did to him, he passed out or he didn't feel the full brunt, but it was painful. I'll tell you, it was a horrible way to die. But the one who suffered the most was his mom. And so energetically, the angels, et cetera, were around him. He wanted to, everybody to know, I don't know why Rosa Parks is standing here now. She's smiling. These people all stood for something and he's very proud to be part of this, but his mom suffered the most. He was there the minute she crossed over. She, she was so happy to see her son. But as we were connected on earth, we're not necessarily connected in spirit. We did what we were supposed to do and now we move forward. And don't worry about those two men and that woman. Now he's not wishing he forgives them. <laughs> Can you believe that? He's not wishing for horrible, but he told me every single hit and pain and fear I experienced because it was like he turned into a baby. He wanted his mama. Every single feeling he had, they had to feel it too, a thousandfold when they went to the other side. That woman that announced that she was lying, I think she was having bad dreams or something, but it didn't protect her over there. So I'm not saying fire and brimstone. As long as they stand in the realm of, dear God, please forgive me, what was I doing? But you know, that innate prejudice, that's all part of who we are. I mean, especially the white man, unfortunately. Um, cause I have white in me too. So my dad is white and I have Confederate and union Irish in the English. And then I got the Mexican and my Comanche. So that innate prejudice, it's a gradual thing. It's, it's hard because, you know, kids, when they're young at their families walking around saying, can you believe that in person, this in person? They use that kind of language as if they're, because have you seen the pictures of even the young girls that the, the guard was allowing to go into the school and all those white women with that? It's just like that, the Trump people, that their face gets distorted because, you know, the evil loves that. They love sucking in that energy. So... He is with the powers that be. And if he would have been 82 years old today, he loved him some birthday parties too. His mom must have made a big deal out of birthdays because his earth parties were fun. But the parties up here are better. There's might be several people that he was with in that house that might be dead. I see one person still alive that still thinks about it to this day. And you know, they were scared to death. They couldn't help him. They couldn't do it. Those guys came in and kid and they admitted they kidnapped him and the jury still found them not guilty. So all of them are, are susceptible on the other side. All of them will feel it. If you walk around with prejudice, conscious or unconscious, it's going to catch up with you over there. You'll have to feel what you thought about and did to other people. That ugly anger will catch up with you, both sides. Okay, so God bless President Biden for doing this for Emma Till. This was such a story, but it was a story of awakening. It was supposed to happen. It was, I know that sounds crazy, but this young boy, I want you to know, he suffered, but he, he got knocked unconscious or something. So he's like, I wished I could have told my mom, mom, I didn't, because the final was the bullet hole, but it's almost like, you know, he was out of it. He didn't know. He couldn't feel anymore. Um, but the person who suffered the most was his mother. And I think he came to her in dreams and stuff. So, you know, thank God she had faith. 
and she was able to carry through. But what a horrible thing to see your beautiful baby boy looking like that in a coffin. And God bless her proud energy saying, no, no, I want everybody to see what's done. Just like Jacqueline Onassis when President Kennedy got shot. And they said, oh, we'll take that, take that suit off his. Well, no, I want people to see what has happened. So, um, of course, it's a different story, but you, you guys get the gist. The other person I saw the other day that I was going to talk about later, but I'll talk about it now before I have to get off and start my live, was Karen Carpenter. She had, I saw her before. I think I read on her before when um, Sterling and Andrea and I were doing Dead Famous that we had a good time with that. And then Sterling got so busy, he couldn't do it anymore. And somehow Andrea and I didn't con continue. I need to talk to her about that. But anyway, so she came through and she was just smiling. She said, by the way, Emmett has not taken another body. Neither has his mother. And, and um, Carpenter hasn't. Okay, I'm going to tell you what she said. First of all, she wants you guys to know she she is singing with angelic forces. It's just beautiful. She was always both knew that she had this gift. Her mission, had she accepted it, she once before had not been happy, even though she was so brilliantly talented. But she walked in with a family, the mother and the brother, She's not blaming it. She's not acting out about this. That were not. It was like they were always angry at her. I don't know what this is about. It's like she couldn't compete or she couldn't make them happy. Uh, even that marriage she did, part of it she did it because her parents didn't want her to do it. But her brother, who's still alive, she loves him very much. And he really feels sorry for a lot of stuff that happened. But he was very, you got to do this, you got to do it, probably even while he was hooked on drugs. But he was, um, and the mother would side with the brother. I just got that hit. I don't know if it's true or not, but, uh, but she forgives him, of course. And she forgives the mom, too. But they didn't help much with letting her go her own path. Actually, the brother thought he owned her voice. He owned, he's the one creating the music. You're just the voice. No, she was the one that made the music happen. You know what I'm saying? So that was just beautiful. So she's doing really good. And she said, I'm singing with the angels. And I think all of them are going to come back in another life. Um, but it, they have to wait for the brother to come too. He's not going right now, but she's talking about it. But she loves him very much. They had walked the earth before. But yeah, he, he just kept insisting. He was her mother in another life. Do it my way. So she felt no control. And part of her way of fighting this lack of control was by being anorexic. And she kept doing it till it trained her. So yeah, that was just gorgeous. So hold on, I'm going to ask something. So this, John McCain had passed me by in my mind's eye, but he didn't stop to say anything. And just now, I'm as I'm thinking of closing the shirt video out, I felt him again. So just now I put you on pause. And I asked if he has any messages. He's really sorry about his daughter. It's like she's infected with something. It's almost like the Robert F. Kennedy family, Jr. Like when they say, you know, he's our brother or our uncle, but we don't know him. You know, he's not, he doesn't represent us. And that's what I'm feeling about John. Even the wife, the mother, I feel she's disappointed in the daughter because she goes off. She's very spoiled. So she's not a happy person. They love her still, but it, it's not how he raised her, he said. Okay, so what else did you want to tell us? He actually, he wants you guys to know there's a whole bunch of top-notch people over there, including the higher Christ consciousness. 
that are working to help everyone get through these tough times of Trump. And he was a plant. He's somebody we were supposed to go through. And you know, something else Emma Till told me, and I'll bring it up now because uh, McCain reminded me of it. The denominator, the common denominator in the human experience is suffering. And without suffering, you will not see God or whoever you want to call your higher realm. And in that suffering, we will find peace. So, you know, like Trump even called McCain a loser because he, he got taken as a prisoner. This is bone spurs, you know, got no business making a comment about anybody. Ooh, he just showed me Jack Smith. We're all working over here and we're helping Jack Smith as much as we can. We're whispering in their ears, him and his staff. Thursday, big day. I usually don't go with hitting a day, but he just said Thursday's a big day. Um, Trump will not get away with this. And don't listen to the polls. He just told me Biden will win again. He's the best man, the best man to win. You cannot have what, what is there, what, what could possibly. The Satan's a joke, he just said to me. It's very sad about the Satan. He's not a good person. And no, Trump is not the evil one. What does that mean? He's not a demon reincarnated. He's just, it's like somebody who's a catalyst, someone who just causes chaos. And he's so self-absorbed. Can you imagine saying, I'm going to be arrested and that's okay because I'm doing it for all of you to save America. Oh my God, not a word about, I committed the crime, so let me go. <laughs> Yeah, that's what McCain just said. It's very sad, but he said he's a joke. It's one big joke. We will learn a lot from this. This will be going through the history and the halls of our democracy for many years. Please don't be afraid. Unfortunately, the world is going into some suffering, not necessarily all of it in the United States. There's other places, too. Netanyahu will be taken out. He just said that. Not necessarily like, boom, like escorted out or taken out. That's what he just said. Israel was shut down. They are not going to let go. Okay, anything else you need us to know? I was very happy to meet Emmett Till. I'd known about him in my life. And he stands with the universal consciousness. He's a very high energy form. He doesn't have to come back to earth. He has no more lessons to learn. Well, that's interesting because he told me he hadn't come back because I'm looking, are you picking another life? No, he doesn't have to come back. His mom, his mom suffered too. The freedom over here is so overpowering. The love is so beautiful. You would never for a minute struggle on earth knowing that one day soon you'll be home again. You are so loved over here. It just goes through your whole body. So watch what you think. Be careful in your thoughts. Some of you say, I am not racist. I am not prejudiced. I am not this or that. But in your subconscious, it's there. When you cross to the other side, you can't hide any of it. So if you're having a hard time getting rid of it, denounce it in verbal form. Ask the guides to help you to denounce those little demons in your head, which could be something you had because of your childhood. Fortunately for me, well, my mom was prejudiced. 
the Mexican Indian, she had a little prejudice in her against other Mexicans. But my dad, believe it or not, the white one, never heard him say a bad word about any nation. So he never said to me, you better not bring home this, this or that, never. So anyway, I just had to tell you guys this little bit of love and destiny, that, that feeling I got from Emmett was so beautiful. And it's his birthday. So I told him, I said, listen, I got to do a four o'clock show. But rather than talk on the live, I'm going to make a little just dedication to you. I'm just going to talk about you. Oh, he said this president walks with the light too. President Biden's a good person. Hi, you guys. I had to come off for a minute because my yard guy is here to make sure that my irrigation is working. Some of my plants look like they're dying. But anyway, I got to come off because I'm going to do a live pretty soon. I'll upload this. God bless you, Emmett Tell. Everybody stand and say a prayer. He said, no, don't say a prayer for me. Say a prayer for you. Okay, thank you. Please pray for me. America's going through a lot, but our democracy will be saved. I don't want you guys to worry. God is with you. And don't forget the common denominator with us all is suffering. We're going to have to suffer sometimes, but through that suffering comes light. Through that suffering comes mercy. I'll tell you, I've suffered a lot in my life. And uh, I'm glad I went through it because I like who I ended up being. Took a long time. <laughs> all right, you guys, I love you all. We'll catch up again at four o'clock when I go live. Cheers.